They protect us. They defend us. They help us in times of need. But they're being destroyed from within. Last year saw more army suicides than any year on record. Day. Our son was just one of thousands of veterans that this country has lost to suicide. After day. Only to die here at home in their sleep. After day. He then used a pistol to take his own life. There is a hidden enemy at work. It's got to stop. And it's hiding in plain sight. From 2009 to 2012, more U.S. soldiers died by suicide than from traffic accidents, heart disease, cancer, and homicide. The U.S. Secretary of Defense called it an epidemic. So, yeah, it's a problem. Some have claimed that this is because of the stresses of war, but 85% of military suicides never even saw combat, and 52% never deployed. Meanwhile, the competence of military psychiatrists is never even questioned, and it's resulting in suicide attempts such as this one. My son joined the Army. He wanted to make a career and become something. He was still sweet and, and more normal when he came back from Iraq. Even though he had, you know, nervousness in crowds and PTSD, uh, he was not different in personality as far as, you know, to that degree like what we saw later on the drugs. And so when Michael said, hey, I'm, you know, I have an anxiety issues, I said, you need to go tell them. Well, and that's what really began his journey. That was the, you know, that was the, the worst step, that, in my opinion, that we could have ever done. You know, it started off with one drug and went to two. E with each successive um, symptom that he got, he got a new drug. And we noticed that he started to go down in personality. It wasn't our son anymore. It was, you know, anger, slurred speech. It was surreal because the person I was talking to wasn't even my son. He was unsure of himself. He didn't have any, um, any will to do anything. Um, at one point, he had stopped brushing his teeth, drinking water, eating because he didn't care. He didn't even know that he was that way. And I researched and discovered that our soldiers were being medicated and that they were committing suicide from it. So I printed all my research out and I handed it to my husband. And I said to my husband, tell me what you think of all this research. And he came back to me and said, if my calculations are correct, there's a pattern here that matches our son's behavior. And if my calculations are correct, he's just about ready to commit suicide. I was in the dollar store and he called me and said, I don't want to upset you, but I want you to know Michael's okay. But he tried to kill himself and he put two IVs in his arms and he bled out in the bathtub and he was drawing in his blood on the walls. He didn't even know he was committing suicide. So his cognizance, his reason, was already usurped by these pills. You know, they take away who you are. And he wasn't the same. We had the hospital check him and they found at least nine drugs in his system. And they're just the ones they tested for. They were giving my son drugs that had black box warnings, said, if you're under 25 and you're taking this pill, your risk of suicide is going up 50%. Risk of suicide but they were still given the pills. What he went through was so horrific, it's hard for him to talk about, but he allows us to speak because he wants to save his comrades. He wants to save others who are going through the same thing, who are being drugged with lethal cocktails. Me speaking as Michael, knowing the things that he has said to others, he would say, stay away from the pills. It's a dead end. Psychiatrists claim their drugs save lives, but they rarely discuss the serious risk of suicide. Why don't they? Because those black box warnings for 18 to 24 year olds, that's the age range of nearly half of all deployed American soldiers. And yet, the use of psychiatric drugs in the US military has soared 76% since 2001. 
That includes antidepressants that psychiatrists hand out to soldiers to prevent suicide. There is no evidence, there is no evidence that drugging stops suicide. The reason I'm, I'm saying this is because it is alleged that if somebody is suicidal, you should medicate them. Except there's no evidence that medicating somebody who is suicidal is going to prevent suicide. There's substantial evidence that many drugs actually promote suicide. And last year, within the DOD, uh, there were 349 suicides among uh, military personnel. That's almost one a day, literally one a day. That's more suicides than were killed in combat. And the military is very concerned. In fact, in uh, 2009, Fort Campbell, Kentucky was actually closed down by the base commander for a time because of they were having just an inordinate number of suicides. Suicides on Fort Campbell have to stop now. The last I heard, the VA was getting close to 450 calls a day to their suicide hotline, which they set up years ago to handle the amount of veterans that have suicidal thoughts on a daily basis. 450 calls a day. It's a problem that has echoed through the halls of government. One of the biggest concerns I have about the military is the inordinate number of suicides that have taken place among active duty and those who've left the military. Three years ago, I got Congress to hold hearings to examine the relationship between suicide and increased use of medications. And there was a direct parallel. The amount of suicides were increasing proportionate to the amount of medications being introduced. So do antidepressants cause suicide? Of course they do. So. Don't blame the soldiers. Don't blame the military as a whole. Blame the corruption of the military by the psychiatric industry that is peddling false, dangerous medicine, that is peddling a kind of modern day quackery, calling it treatment, but delivering suicide. And as bad as it is in active duty, veterans have it far worse. They're killing themselves at a rate of 22 a day, one every 65 minutes. But do psychiatrists ever consider stopping the drugging? No. Instead, it's an all-out assault.